Hello, Ken. Welcome to TOP. Thank you. Uh, we've got an unknown from the teacher who is struggling with something. Uh, please have a look and uh, say what you think of that. I'll read, okay? When a student is less interested in learning that I expected, that I blame myself on this and begin to skip some planned exercises, constantly thinking that it is not important at all. It seems to me that students already know everything or do not want to learn. My students take control of this educational process. My own motivation and interest in the lesson decrease. Wow. This is an extraordinary um, thought and quite complex, but also I think quite common. And I think there's different elements. I'm going to try and deconstruct the statement and look at it line by line and try and offer some thoughts. Um, first of all, when a student is less interested in learning than I expected, then I blame myself on this. You have to stop doing that. That's the first thing, okay? you are doing your best as a teacher okay you're putting your life and soul into it and you're preparing everything you can if your students are not taking the material in the way you hoped it's not your fault it's a problem but it's not your fault you mustn't blame yourself for things okay that's the very first thing just try and step back and say i am doing my best if things aren't working in the classroom i might need to change things but don't don't blame yourself don't feel guilty about it that's the first thing then it says, I blame myself on this and begin to skip some planned exercises, constantly thinking that it's not important at all. There's nothing wrong with that as such, skipping things that don't seem to be working. I don't have a problem with that. And, you know, these things happen. I think that's happened to me in class. I went in with a great lesson plan. Clearly, it wasn't what the students wanted. So I abandoned the plan. I've done that many times in my life. And if you know about the... Um, the dogma movement, the teaching unplugged movement, which says go into a classroom and try and work with things that happen in the classroom, things that emerge in the classroom, then they would say that's the way to do it. If it's not working, abandon the plan and then see what happens. But that in itself is even more frightening. OK, constantly thinking that it's not important at all. Again, that's a kind of psychological thing. Try not to do that. You know, when you're planning your lessons, you're doing your best and they, you want them to be important. If the students don't think they're important, that's too bad, but it's not something you should worry yourself about. OK, so there's lots of different things happening here in the classroom. And then another important thing is when a student is less interested in learning, if we're talking about a classroom and we have a problem with one student. Now, if you do have a problem with one student, this is an aside from my main answer. I think it's really useful to talk to that student, okay? After the class, not during the class, don't say, why don't you like my class in the middle of the class? That would be a disaster. But if you get a chance, just say after this, um, is there anything about this class that you would like to see different? Okay, that's putting the responsibility on the students. Now, interestingly, later on you say, uh, my students take control of the educational process. That's a good thing. That is a good thing to happen when the students take control, okay? And I would say a problem for many classes, particularly in state schools, I think we're talking about private education, in, possibly in your case, but in state schools, when students walk into a class and they go, whatever you, whatever you give me, I will accept. I'm not that interested. And that's very unfortunate. That's not, there's not enough student participation and student involvement in what's going on. OK, so as you progress through your life with a class, it's important to devolve responsibility onto the students themselves. But you can't just walk in and say, what would you like to learn today? That would be no good at all. OK, what you need to do is to put your students in groups and say, what what in our group, what's the most important thing we want to learn? And in small groups, speaking in Russian with each other. OK, this is important to their education. Don't ask them to speak English at a time when they need to really access some very basic thoughts. Put the students in groups and say, what is it you like uh, from your English classes? Just decide amongst yourselves. They probably never thought about this because education is a very passive experience for most students most of the time, which is very sad. 
education should not be a passive experience for the students, but that's unfortunately the way things happen, particularly in an exam class when you, you know, you, come on, boys and girls, we're going to be doing an exam in four weeks time. That's all we have to think about. Okay, we'll think about the exam. This is not looking at the needs and requirements of the students themselves. This is a very interesting piece of um, thought thinking that's in this thing here, and there's many different aspects to it. So I'm finding it difficult to give one simple answer. But quite clearly, there's two things at first. One, do not feel demotivated because some of the students don't like what you do. Secondly, give them the chance to say what they would like to do in class more often, okay? There was a famous example of um, a teacher who decided to ask the class what they'd like to do. He just walked in and said, today I want to do whatever you want to do, what would you like to do? And one of the students said, I'd like to just go outside and go for a walk. And all the ones said, yes, okay. And they all left. And the teacher got into serious trouble with the director of studies because they weren't allowed to do that. So that's not the answer, okay? Little by little, devolve responsibility onto the students themselves about what happens in the classroom. And I'm very sad about the last sentence in this statement, my own motivation and interest in the lesson decrease. I completely understand when that's happening. That very last sentence, my own motivation and interest in the lesson decrease. So it's, what happens is there's a feeling that the students don't like the material, you lose, you lose your belief in the material and your motiv motivation decreases. Uh, my talk, um, am I doing a motivation talk? <laughs> yes, yes, you are doing that motivation. I, I do so many different talks for Katrine at different conferences, <laughs> but I will try and show how you can break this barrier that happens. I mean, most students, most of the time, trust their teacher to bring something into the classroom which might be of value or of interest. And that's as far as they go. And most students are still in the 21st century. I mean, I, I went to school 50 years ago, 60 years ago, when the idea was shut up and listen. Shut up and listen was the basis of all education when I was at school. So I shut up and I listened and I wrote things down and I passed exams. But I think the nature of education, the nature of learning is so different now. And it really is a question of, we're gonna find out what we can do, how we can do this together, how we can make this work together. Again, it's very easy for me to say that from a distance. It's very, very challenging when you're in a classroom with students where you feel that there's something missing in the connection somehow you've got to connect and connect with the best students first or with them not so much the best students but the ones who like your material don't look around at the ones who don't like it look at the ones who do like it and try and get them to mix with the ones who don't like it and find a way to sort of modify what's happening so everybody gets interested this has been a long and complicated answer but it's a complicated situation you've expressed it very well and you've expressed what must be happening for a lot of teachers around the world. So I hope the answer has been helpful. Yes, it's been helpful and absolutely brilliant. And you're going to uh, give great techniques and tips uh, during your uh, top four speech in the conference. I'm sure. I hope so, I hope so. Okay, thank you very much, Ken. You're very welcome.